Representative Zepfer. Uh, for Dr. Peterson. Chair, members of the committee. Madam Chair, Dr. Peterson, um, I just want to confirm before getting into my line of questioning, um, you um, provide therapy, you work with youth experiencing gender dysphoria or coming to you with, with these sorts of issues, yes? Extensively, yes. At my full-time practice, about 35 active clients at any given point, about a third of those are youth who I work with at various stages in their life and process. Follow up, go ahead. Chair, Dr. Peterson, um, we've heard testimony about um, gender ideology and forcing ideology and stuff like that. I'm just wondering if you can speak briefly to how you interface with your clients who come to you experiencing these issues, both with them and then also how do you consult with medical professionals across the... Right, that is an, an, in, an necessarily integrated part of the work, the consultation. As I said in my testimony, the work with trans youth from a psychotherapeutic perspective is, it's unhurried. And the only hurry is that these ch kids are in distress and that, that we need to address the, 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 you know, the, the dysphoria that they're experiencing. But there is no hurry, there is no agenda on my part. As I said, it's, it's, I have no, I don't have no way of knowing who anyone else is. And I think anyone who provides this care has the same awareness. We're not dictating someone's gender or sexuality in any way. We are helping our clients figure that out for themselves in consultation with their parents extensively and then also with we, I have relationships with medical providers across the community and, and who we coordinate with and who I interface with as if the, if the decision is made on the part of the family to pursue hormonal or medical transition. Follow up? Go ahead. Madam Chair, Dr. Peterson, uh, thank you for that. So for youth, um, teens who pursue uh, this care um, and are working with you, uh, we heard a bit about uh, regret rates or detransition rates or stuff. Can you speak to, in your practice, what those regret uh, rates look like? Absolutely, yes. And I, I would include in this answer, if it, was, if it is okay, also, I see uh, people across the lifespan. So I see adults who have transitioned as ch children as well. So I want to include that. Over the course of, like, as I've said, I've, I've worked for many years with this population and um, the hundreds of people many years. And I have had the, well, the, the re incidence of regret in my practice, simply put, is zero. There is, n I have not had anyone come back at any point and I work with these kids over time very, very often. I'm working with them into adulthood or they come back later in life. They're not regretting things. They're, I have yet to see it, the, the incidence of regret. It was so, yeah, I'll, I'll pause. <laughs> Stop. One last follow-up. One more follow-up. <laughs> Dr. Peterson, uh, thank you for that. Um, you talk about working with uh, this population over time. If we're not seeing regret, if you're not seeing regret in your practice over time, what are you seeing from the people who have come to you and have said, I am trans, and then are receiving gender affirming care? I'm seeing joy. I'm seeing, as I said, the, the kids come to life. They, I, I, I watch the, what the real transition underneath the transition is, a person emerging into themselves and being able to be a fully active, productive human being in the world and have joy and have happy relationships. I see that again and again and again and again. I could tell a million stories of that. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Dr. Peterson, for all you do. Representative Hawk.